Hey, it's Joshua Kittle here with Opus Advisors. Thank you again for joining me. So uh, last week we talked about USDA loans and just kind of gave a general overview. So today I want to talk a little bit about USDA loans and properties. Because USDA does have some unique things that you don't come across with most of your other loan programs we need to be aware of. So first, let's talk about property types. USDA is great with stick-built or what we call site-built homes. However, USDA is not a fan of manufactured homes. Now their program does allow for a manufactured home, however, there's two things to that. First off, they only allow a manufactured home if it's being first time placement, meaning you've bought the lot, you bring it from the factory, set it on the property, or if it's already been set on the property, brand new, and has never been lived in and less than 12 months old. Those are the only exceptions which USDA will allow for manufactured home. However, combined to that though, most of your lenders will not do that loan program. So it's not just a matter of USDA or any loan program stating what they can or cannot allow. The investors or the lenders who actually lend the money because USDA just sets the guidelines, they insure the lender, but they are not the people providing the loan. So those lenders can put additional restrictions or what we call overlays on top of that. So for the most part, I'd say USDA is not a good fit for a manufactured home. Okay, so other things we talked about, and we mentioned it in the last video, is USDA does have geographic restrictions on where a home can be located. A big one was being that the, the, the property has to be located in a rural area, so population density of less than 50,000. So again, just a quick re highlight from that, if you're in Corvallis, Albany, Salem, Eugene, Springfield, Portland, Klamath Falls, or Bend, these cities all have too much population density and therefore the city proper does not qualify. However, however, keep in mind that on the outskirts of these cities, I mean, you can, there is a kind of a cutting line, so you can feel like you're almost in the city, but technically you are not. Those areas can work. Other restrictions that USDA have on property is it cannot be located, or in most cases, again, there's an exception to it, but as a general rule, the property cannot be located in a flood zone. So what happens if you have a house and you love it and it's in a flood zone? When can it work with USDA? So it can work with USDA if you're able to prove that the property or the improvements to the property, meaning the house, is located above the floodplain. So you can have a, a piece of land in which maybe a part of the land is in the flood zone, but the house is built on the higher section of the land or it was built up off the land so that it's actually out by the flood zone. For this to work, you will have to have an in, uh, engineer come out and do what's called a flood certification or elevation cert. They will go out there, they'll take readings of all the different points of the house and determine that no point of the house is in, in the flood zone. Now, even if you have just one sixteenth of an inch of a corner of the house, and just one corner of the house is in the flood zone, then the entire property is considered in the flood zone. So if the engineer goes out there, they do their, their reports and they say it is above the 100 year floodplain, then at that point the engineer can submit the letter to FEMA and get what's called a LOMA letter. This is where FEMA reviews the engineer works and then FEMA issues a letter stating that they agree the property is outside the flood zone and that you would not be required to have flood insurance. If you can do that, and we, I have done this in the past, then you can purchase that home even though the property is in the flood zone. The other exception to it, and this is a very tough one to get USDA to sign off on though, if you can show that the area in which you're purchasing the home, that it's all underwater, that the whole area is in a flood zone, and that there is no reasonable property within your price range and your qualification within a reasonable distance to your work that is outside the flood zone, then USDA can make an exception. However, if there is a property in the market that meets your requirements as far as square footage and size of bedroom for the family as determined by USDA and you simply don't like the location or the build or the style of the floor plan, doesn't matter. USDA says there is a home available outside the floodplain and they would require you to purchase that home and not the other home. So that's the big thing there. Now another big thing with USDA that's unlike any other program is they're very picky on properties that are considered income producing. USDA is very adamant about not wanting to, uh, buyers to kind of use this program as an investment standpoint. So that does mean that you're only looking at single unit homes. So duplexes, threeplex, fourplex, those are all out of the equation. It also means though that something as simple as if you're buying a property, perhaps you have a, a nice home, it's on an oversized lot, if the county or the city states that lot can be subdivided into two separate lots, 
then USDA is going to view that property as income producing because even if you have no intentions of doing so, you could purchase the property, go out and have it re-engineered, split off a second lot, and sell that lot and make a profit. And therefore, USDA will not lend on that. Now, some other examples of income producing properties would be properties that generate farming income. So even if it's a hobby farm, if you're out there and, you're, and the property is generating income from that, that would be a concern. USDA uh, typically looks at this as, again, it doesn't even really matter if you yourself plan on making income. If the home was in a mixed use area, zone for commercial use, because you can make that uh, commercial property or maybe run a, a little business out of it, USDA is not going to like that. And so they would decline that property. Um, another thing a lot of people used to get, the USDA used to be a real big stickler for it, and it caused a lot of problems. And, and they've changed it quite a few years ago, but I still run into a lot of realtors and stuff who are quite unsure on this because it caused so much problem in the past is outbuildings. And what will USDA allow for an outbuilding? At one point, the interpretations of the USDA rules were so constrained that everybody felt that pretty much if you had a house and anything bigger than like a, a pump house, in addition to the home, the USDA wouldn't like those outbuildings. But that's been clarified some years ago. And basically, again, it comes down to what's the practical application or use of those outbuildings. So you are allowed to have a large multi-car garage. Um, but where you'd run into problems is if you had a real large garage, uh, you're right next to a bunch of acreage, and you've got a combine tractor parked into it, or that shop is set up with like uh, hydraulic lifts, maybe 220 wiring instead of the standard 120 going throughout the, the property. Those are things that USDA might look at that and say this property is getting more of the feel of a industrial, commercial-like feel and decline it. So again, there's lots of little things about USDA. Uh, a big one again is properties, but in short, if you're not purchasing a manufactured home, you're not in a flood zone, the property is not subdividable, and if it's not an income producing property with farm deferrals uh, or large farm deferrals or an operating farm, you should be okay. If you have more questions on a, or you have a specific property you want to know if it would qualify for USDA, please just give me a call, 541-284-8032. You can shoot me an email at jkittle at opusadvisors.com. Or if you're seeing this on Facebook, just go ahead and give me a little message or a comment. All right. Thank you very much. I'm glad you tuned in. And we'll talk next week a little bit more about USDA loans. Have a great day.